Hey everyone, yeah, just because your son or daughter has gone off into college or university, and I don't think for one minute that it necessarily means that all they're getting is an academic education. In case you're not aware of it, they're also getting indoctrinated into this pretense that now you can treat people based on nothing more than their skin color, their race, their sex, or other superficial aspects that make up who they are. Things that are predominantly outside of their control. But this is what you're inundated with today in these institutions. Listen up for this particular example. Headline out of the college fix. White privilege lecture tells students white people dangerous if they don't see race. It's being reported by Diana Serrano, Boston University, March 6, 2019. During a guest lecture at Boston University on Monday, University of Washington professor Robin D'Angelo told the audience a dangerous white person sees people as individuals rather than by skin color. What the? This is so completely contradictory and the opposite of everything <laughs> that I was ever taught in regards or how it pertains and how we treat each other. It, why would you want to treat someone based on their skin color? Of course you want to treat people based on their individual characteristics or who they are as an individual. But not according to this lecturer at a major university, I'll add. D'Angelo, whose main field of work is whiteness studies, added that those who say they were taught to treat everyone the same deny black people of their reality, she said. In making the claim, D'Angelo said she was lifting the terminology from her frequent co-facilitator at speaking engagements, black scholar Aaron Trent Johnson. D'Angelo's comments were couched during a section of her talk titled, What Does It Mean to Be White?, that discussed color blindness and those who say, I was taught to treat everyone the same, or some version of that. If you are being honest, you've probably said it, she told the audience. Then added that, in reality, no one in the room was taught to treat everyone the same. Your parents could lecture you to do it, but you don't do it. You can't do it. There is no human objectivity. She said when she hears people talk about treating everyone the same, it tells her, this person doesn't understand basic socialization. This person doesn't understand culture. This person is not self-aware. I need to give a heads up to the white people in the room, D'Angelo said. When people of color here say this, they're generally not thinking. All right, I'm talking to a white person right now. Usually some version of eye rolling is going on and a wall is going up. My friend Aaron Trent Johnson, she says, when I hear a white person says this, what I am thinking is, this is a dangerous white person. This is a white person who is going to need to deny my reality. To me, this sounds like a whole lot of projecting. That's, that's something I've noticed in past situations of these people that constantly talking about race and gender. It seems that these are the people that seem to be predisposed with thinking in such binary terms. Or Like I say, this sounds very much like projection. Is that really what we're talking about, what we're dealing with in these postmodernists or these leftists or these cultural Marxists or, or these identity politics promoters? Is that really what we're dealing with today? I, I think that is the case. I, I can't say for certainty. Like I say, I don't know these people enough and I wouldn't be presumptuous to know. That's the thing. I'm not a collectivist and I won't, even though this woman is white and shares the same skin color as me, I'm not even going to presume to know what's going on in Roman her head, even with a lot of the rhetoric and this color of her skin. There's a lot more to this woman than what I'm even going to read from this. But I'm already starting to understand some underlying aspects of the rhetoric, at least. It sounds like she may be projecting. I could be wrong. It, be, it could be an incorrect assumption on my behalf. But at least it makes sense as far as what I'm observing or what I'm hearing or reading in this article. D'Angelo's sentiment stands in stark contrast to a famous alumnus of school. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., who earned his Ph.D. in theology from Boston University and famously pronounced that he had a dream that his four children will one day live in a nation where they will no longer be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character, which uh, just makes total sense, right? And the fact that people are trying to upend that to mean something that's opposite to what it's like I say. These are the people, these are subjectivists, like I see these postmodernists that believe that there is no such thing as truth or objective reality or logic. Everything is just subjective and based on personal preferences or opinion. Like, well, if you believe that, well, that's why people like this put forth narratives such as this. They don't believe in objective reality or objective truth or even logic, right? And if you don't believe in any of those things, I suppose this kind of diatribe, this kind of rhetoric uh, should be expected. 
But D'Angelo placed a great emphasis on racial identity throughout the lecture and dedicated a significant portion of her introduction to acknowledging the fact that she herself is a white person. I want to be clear that as I stand up here with authority and a voice on this topic, I'm reinforcing whiteness and the centrality of the white view, she said. I like to be a little less white, which means a little less oppressive, oblivious, defensive, ignorant, and arrogant. <laughs> You're speaking for yourself, lady. You're not speaking for the rest of white people. Like, holy fucking... Like, collectivism and postmodernism. What? Those are those are two ideologicals that are, that are not just clashing, but they can very well, as they clash and meld into each other, and we see how that's playing out, it, it's going to be a detriment. For societies going forward and the fact that this is being done in in a university setting folks and was yeah i'm not going to read any more of this i'm sure it's full of a lot more foolishness but i mean like i say i'm just going to leave it up to you right i'm not going to tell you how to think about this i'm giving you my opinion my perspective and how i think or how i perceive what this woman's saying which is like i say i think she's projecting right that, that she believes that the rest of us think the same way that she does and that's as an individual i know that's not true i know that factually to not be true because I've actually lived in the real world and I don't function in an echo chamber. I've actually surrounded myself with a lot of different people and not just based on their skin color, right? So I understand there's a lot of variances and a lot of variables in regards to how we think or perceive each other based on a lot more things than just skin color, race, sex, and gender, all that. That's why, like I say, once again, the importance of dealing with each other as individuals. Group think, identity politics, or collectivism of any form seeks to deny the individual. And once again, if you respect or you care about anyone as it pertains to rights, freedoms, or liberty, well, or being a minority, well, like Ayn Rand said, and I've said many times by quoting her, is the individual is the smallest minority on the planet. So if you're an SJW and you care for social justice or standing for social justice, you have to be a staunch defender of individualism and respecting the autonomy and the sovereignty of the individual and treating them as such. It's a Canadian libertarian, and I love liberty.